I think if I remember anything most about myself was it was that I had a very similar disposition than I have now about seeing things that don't seem fair. Harlem in the mid-1960s or so, it was a difficult time for Harlem, difficult time for black urban communities, and at eight, I, I just couldn't understand why that could happen. And so eventually, you know, my mother decided that I should be, you know, that the career that was perfect for me would be to be a criminal defense attorney. So I decided I was going to be the black female Clarence Darrow. That kind of curiosity coupled with a certain kind of outrage about certain things has always been part of my way of seeing things. I went to college assuming I would be a lawyer. I ended up majoring in sociology. I took this class on inequality and it was just the moment I wish I could give every student. So actually when I teach now, I really remember how I felt when the world made sense. The big picture was astonishing. On the one hand, I was outraged. I was like, this is completely unfair. But then I thought, oh, I can see it now, so we can probably fix it. For me, it was just this watershed moment. But at the same time, I still had a lot of interest in, in the arts and in creativity and in music and in the spaces people create in their lives. And that's what fascinated me about hip hop uh, early on in the 1980s when, it's, when it sort of broke into mass media. I had been in my neighborhood, you know, it was just sort of what kids did. You know, there were boom boxes, which were popular in the late 70s, early 80s, and people would rhyme, you know, basically on the sidelines. I was mostly either playing basketball or handball. I just, I had no MC skills whatsoever. But, you know, I listened to a lot of music and played a lot of music, um, but I mostly heard it in my own neighborhood in Co-op City in the Bronx. They would rhyme on top of the B-side of a disco song, and then they would record it on another boom box. The question was, would someone show up to watch you? That was the highlight. Would someone stop what they were doing to come over and watch you rhyme? That was like a record deal, the equivalent of a record deal. When Cool Herc gave a party, everybody be there. It was the first time I heard a music on the radio that I had heard before it made the radio. So for me it was just, well, how did it get in there? For how did it get from here to the radio? And what does that mean? And what are people's perceptions? And what are the ways in which it evolved? So it was a great place for me to think about the, my twin fascinations, really. It wasn't until my senior year that I wrote a, a paper in a mass media course on rap music. It was very, very early in, in hip hop's history. And it was at that point, you know, I got some advice about going to graduate school. So I wrote on my applications, you know, if I can write on this, uh, I would like to come, but if, I, if this is unacceptable, I, I don't want to go. Brown let me in. And they respected that I was serious about it and that there were other people who could help me. And, you know, they should, they should understand themselves as opening up a field, really, because it was the first book on the subject. It's the first serious academic treatment. It wasn't easy. Not everybody respected it as a subject. Some of it was fear. Oh, you'll never get a job. But I didn't think that was true. So one of the best lessons I learned about research doing a field that didn't exist, right, was that there's a lot to know from that which is not exactly what you're doing. And thinking about that in the big picture, and then thinking about the African American traditions of it at the same time was really generative. Kind of pushing out from nowhere and saying, well, I see this thing, but it doesn't exist in academic terms, so let me go out and look elsewhere. Black music up to, really, hip hop, had largely been studied as a folk art form, separate from dominant social structures, which was never true. And hip hop made that impossible. And so that connecting black music to high technology was very important for also breaking that segregated mold that we, we talked about black culture in. I didn't think I was going to be a good teacher per se. You know, I had no knowledge of what being a professor was from the real day-to-day -day of it. I thought it was really just writing books and doing research. I've learned about process, patience, but I'm still a work in progress myself on this one. I'm not patient as a personality. But when you come out of grad school, you torture your students with, you know, you don't know this yet? It took me 10 years. Why don't you know it in three days, you know? But I'm comfortable with the process to say, okay, where, where are we? Okay, where are we now? And I'm more comfortable with the reciprocity of exchange about what they know. You know, when you're a new teacher, you want to know everything. You think if you don't know everything, you don't know anything. But I don't know stuff. 
it's really okay. And being honest about where I stand doesn't mean they have to agree with me, but I will fight you about it. It's a combination of openness and discipline. And I think people often forget usually the discipline part. They often think it's just floating around and absorbing things. Um, but the older I get, the more I'm aware that most people have a lot of great ideas, most of which end up on the cutting room floor because we never even respect them enough to follow through. So there's the, there's the moment of creativity, but I think equally uh, important is sort of what's really kind of boring, right? The hard work of developing the chops to turn an idea into something else. Uh, and that's hard. That, you know, books sound great the first time you think about them. <laughs> Getting them into the book form, you know, not so much creativity all the time. Sometimes it just feels like slogging. Every slog has a good outcome, though. Um, so it's really a combination for me, at least. And, you know, hard to do, but, but important.